If you are a student preparing for competitive exams like JEE or BITSAT or for that matter any engineering entrance exams in India, one of the properties of definite integrals that you should definitely have in the back of your mind is what's known in the business as the king rule of definite integrals. It says that the integral of f of x over the limits a to b is same as the integral of f of a plus b minus x over the same limits. Now at this point, I know that some of you might be like, what's the big deal with that? Just go for a substitution taking u as a plus b minus x and the result immediately follows. Sure, but in this video, I want to spend time talking about the very simple geometric interpretations behind such a u substitution in a way that the king's rule seems obvious. It is not always possible to draw neat geometric intuitions behind substitutions but it is always good to have them wherever possible, isn't it? Let's get started. Consider the graph of some function fx. The area under this graph from say x equals a to b is what the integral of fx from a to b evaluates to. Let us flip the graph and the area about the axis x equals a plus b over 2 which happens to be the average value of the integral limits. Now without even knowing what the function representing the flipped graph here in yellow is, wouldn't you agree that the area under this graph from a to b is same as the area under fx from a to b? I mean we have only flipped the area under fx about an axis. And flipping about an axis isn't going to alter the area, isn't it? Let's call the function representing this flipped graph as g of x. We do not yet know what g of x is. But we do know that its integral from a to b has to be equal to the integral of fx from a to b. Now the only thing left is to figure out what the function g of x is. Recollect that g of x is obtained by flipping f of x about the axis x equals a plus b over 2. And this means that the input points x and x prime corresponding to equal heights of the graphs g and f respectively must be equidistant from the flipping axis. Or in other words, the average value of x and x prime must be equal to a plus b over 2. And this leaves x prime as a plus b minus x. Notice that this is true for any input x, not just for some specific choice. Therefore, it can be concluded that g of x is same as f of a plus b minus x and the area can be expressed as the integral of f of a plus b minus x from a to b. So, the substitution u equals a plus b minus x captures all the information of flipping the graph about the vertical axis that is midway between the integral limits. Let us look at an example problem. You are asked to evaluate the integral of this messy function over the limits minus pi by 2 to pi by 2. Let's say that i is the value that this integral evaluates to. Using the king rule that we have just discussed, we can represent the same integral as the following. Now it might look like we have complicated things even more because we have introduced an extra factor of 2 power x in the numerator. But look at what happens when we add equations 1 and 2. Because the limits for both the integrals are exactly the same, we can club both the integrals into a single integral. And surprisingly, it eliminates a lot of mess. And this is the reason why we flipped the graph f of x about the axis that is midway between the integral limits. If the whole purpose was to preserve the area while flipping, we could have chosen any axis not just the one that is midway between the integral limits, isn't it? But then the integral limits of these two graphs would be different. By choosing the axis that is midway, the integral limits are also preserved. And that's what allows us to club the two integrals into a single and often a simple integral. This is a fairly simple integral Try it yourself.